this video, we are going to look into how to make potassium chlorate. And this is going to be with ingredients you can find at your home. Potassium chlorate is an oxidizer. It can be unstable. I've worked with it quite a bit. As long as you keep it in a cool, dry place, don't overheat it anytime unintentionally, or make something with it, and then leave that sitting around, you're usually okay. You'll be careful and typically only make as much as you'll need for whatever you're doing, especially with flash powders. The materials we need are one liter or a quart of regular bleach, sodium hypochlorite is what it is, and don't use anything that's got like splashless bleach or uh, fragrance bleach, you want just plain old bleach. When you heat it, it breaks down into two components. One is sodium chloride, which is salt, and the other one is sodium chlorate. And you can see that with the sodium and the chlorate here, if we swap that sodium out, we'll have potassium chlorate. So the only other ingredient we need is potassium chloride. This is usually sold as a salt substitute in grocery stores, but you have to be careful because oftentimes they do mix other things into the salt substitute. You want pure potassium chloride. If you can't find it uh, in a grocery store, say, you can order it because it's very cheap. So our method for making our potassium chlorate starts with boiling the bleach down until crystals first appear. And uh, this will be a, a bit of time because most of the time your bleach is around 5 to 7%, so you're boiling off a lot of water to get down to the point where you first see crystals. Once you boiled it down, let it cool, and then measure the final volume you have. Then measure the same volume of water as you had in the boiled down bleach, and you want to add the potassium chloride to that water until it's saturated. At this point, you have uh, two liquids. One is the boiled down bleach, and the other one is potassium chloride and water, and they're the same volume. The next step is really simple. Take the potassium chloride solution and pour it into the bleach. You want to make sure you don't get any potassium chloride that didn't dissolve in the water into this. If you're done mixing it well, put it into the fridge or the freezer. The freezer will act quicker, obviously, so just keep an eye on it. You'll see crystals form really clearly, and those are your potassium chlorate crystals. You want to filter those out of the solution and then dry them. This is one of the simplest chemical experiments you can do at home. Just be careful with the bleach, and especially when you're boiling it or heating it up, um, do it outside or under a fume hood because the fumes are pretty caustic. And that's it. Let's go do this. Adding one liter of regular bleach to a one liter beaker. All right. And turn it on down here. Start heating it up and lower the uh, fume hood. So we need to boil this down till we see crystals. At that point, we're gonna stop and cool it down. So if you look carefully, there's a solid that's gathering on the sides of the beaker here. We're down to just about 400 milliliters and occasionally I can see a crystal in there bouncing about and it's time to quit. The boiled bleach solution cooled down on its own and because of that, I lost maybe another 100 milliliters or so. Um, but that's okay, we got 400 mLs here, and that means the solution of uh, KCl or potassium chloride needs to be the same amount. But on the bottom here, you can clearly see some beautiful sodium chloride crystals that have formed. Yep, table salt down there. Because it cooled down on its own, it formed more salt than I was hoping for. This is the amount of salt in here, and that some of it's floating on the top. I've decided to filter it to remove the salt, because what we need, which is a sodium chlorate, is still in solution. This is the sodium chlorate solution. I ended up with around 350 milliliters. So obviously the salt that was in there took up a portion of the volume in the previous beaker. Next, I'll be preparing 350 milliliters of a potassium chloride solution. We know we have 350 milliliters of sodium chlorate solution. So now we need to make 350 milliliters of a KCl potassium chloride solution. And the solubility of potassium chloride is 33 0.97 grams per 100 milliliters of water. Okay, we'll make this 34 grams. It's so close. So 34 grams is what we'll work with. So we have 350 milliliters we need to make. We have 34 grams. So, and that's per 100 milliliters again. So if we take the 350 divided by 100, we get 3.5. And that's what we need to multiply by our 34 grams. 
KCL here. And that leads us to a total of 118.9 grams of KCL. And that'll be in 350 milliliters of water. And this is at 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Oops, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's the temperature of the water I'll be using. We need 118.9 grams of potassium chloride. It emptied out, oh my gosh, at 118.16 grams. I added a touch more from another source, and we have 118.91 grams, and I'm going to call it quits right there. I have my 350 milliliters of distilled water here. I'm going to start spinning this around. And um, the water is really close to 20 degrees C. The heat coming from the hot plate is a little higher there, uh, but that's the hot plate, not the water. In goes the 118.9 grams of KCL. No reason to add it slow. This has been mixing for over five minutes. Obviously all the KCL has not completely dissolved, but I'm gonna call it quits here and turn it off and let whatever solids are in there drop to the bottom. Our potassium chloride solution is on the left here. It's as clear as it's gonna get. It is definitely super saturated, but there are no solids in the liquid. I'm gonna pour that in first. Next, I'm going to pour in the sodium chlorate solution, and immediately, although they won't be able to uh, be seen right away, crystals will start to form, and the potassium from the potassium chloride and the sodium from the sodium chlorate are substituting. For the potassium chlorate crystals to fully form, it needs to be chilled, so it's going in, in here, right there, leave it there overnight. It's 24 hours later, and we can clearly see our potassium chlorate on the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and filter this. Before I filter it, there's so much liquid on the top here, I'm going to decant that first as much as I can. Now that most of it's decanted, I can pour the rest of this in slowly and collect the crystals. Potassium chlorate has been filtered. It's sitting here on the filter paper. And you do want to wash your crystals with some really cold water. This just came out of the freezer. In fact, there's a little bit of ice in there still. I'll be careful about this, but uh, do it just once. But it's important to wash out all the extra unused material. Pull the uh, filter paper out. Here it's sitting. These are some very wet uh, potassium chlorate crystals. Here's the final pile of dried potassium chlorate. I weighed it, and it would turn out to be exactly 25 grams. I think I could have got a greater yield, but I overboiled the bleach in the beginning, unfortunately. But uh, I'm going to test this now. Uh, we'll try some flash powder. Testing the homemade potassium chlorate as a flash powder with dark aluminum. Not too bad. Testing the homemade potassium chlorate with magnesium. Okay, that's what I'm talking about.